So we, we, we just love God. Anybody ready for the word today? All right. Isaiah, 55th chapter. Oh, don't y'all start that. Don't start that. And the eighth verse, we'll start there. The Lord speaking to Israel wants to talk to you. He says, uh, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways. Let's go to the next verse. It says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts higher than your thoughts. I came to say to you even right now, I know we're going to get started, and if you give me 15 minutes, I'll get you out of here. But y'all don't believe me. Okay, here y'all go. But I want to start by prefacing saying that I think some of you have been seeing yourself too low. According to the scripture, according to the scripture, some of you see yourself way too low. Some of you are settling for where you are right now. And God said, no, no, no. When I think of you, I think higher. Mm. I, I see higher, okay? So what I'm saying to you today is if you want to go higher, is there anybody want to go higher? Could I see your hands? God says, if you're willing to let me take you to the next level, you can't be afraid of heights today. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're going to have to be used to this. I need you to get used to this because I'm taking you up. If you feel like you're ready to go all the way up, just say all the way up. I'm going all the way up, all the way up until my enemies are under me, all the way up until what was too big for me, it looks small, all the way up until I forget about all the hell that I had to go through. All I want to try to talk, just talk today. I want to try to talk today. I want to talk to you. Um, because I sense, I sense something happening. I, I, to be honest with you, when I look at you all, um, when I look at the church, I see a runway. Yeah. When I think about how high God wants to take us, and some of you have been sitting on that runway for a long time. And you've been waiting. God just give me the signal. And some of you have been waiting for the proper conditions to leave the runway. And I want to prepare you because there, you may just be taken off in the middle of a storm. But as long as you can hear that voice, I promise you, you're going to get to that destination. I'm going to talk to you today. Just one word. I want you to say it back to me. Take off. Take off. Mm, I want you to look at the person and say, I'm taking off. I'm taking off. I'm taking off. They, you know what, they ain't even, you know what, encourage them, say, you taking off, you taking off, you taking off, you taking off. Listen, where you are right now will not be where you will always be. Y'all don't know when to shout, that's cool. Where you have been your whole life is not where you will stay. God said, my thoughts are high. Oh, man, my thoughts are high. I, I want to take you up. Let's pray. Father, we magnify and bless your name. You're an awesome God. Before we ask of anything, let us be grateful for everything you do. Let us pause and say there is no God like our God. We're the only, we're the only believers that have a God who has died and risen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going to flex on all religions right now. It's just, just going to be what it is. It, it just is what it is. We serve a God that is not, who came on earth as a man, but he is full on God. He is the one who died and rose. That's the God we serve. And because he rose, I can get up. I can rise up too. So Holy Spirit, spend time with us today. We want to hear your voice. We've been on the runway. We feel that the climate, the environment feels like things are going wrong, but this has been orchestrated by you because you are the one that causes storms to obey you. So maybe this storm is to help get me to where I'm supposed to be. Maybe it's supposed to get your church where we're supposed to be. So touch our ears that we'll hear, touch our hearts to receive, touch our minds that we make a decision today to obey and do your will. And as I pray as always that your Holy Spirit set me on fire so the entire world can watch me burn for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 And you take your seat say, I'm taking off. I'm taking off. I'm taking off. I'm going to try to just talk to y'all today. 
Y'all going to have some sense? Y'all going to have some sense and let me just talk? Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise Jesus. I just want to pause real quick and say thank you to all the unseen ministries that you don't see right now. Some Right now, somebody you can't see is running the camera. Somewhere right now, somebody's running something on the screen. Somewhere, somewhere right now, somebody's doing security. Can we just pause and show love for the unseen ministries? Oh, we could do better than that. Come on, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. To every ministry that has felt unseen, God just told me to tell you, I see you. That's what God said. That's not for me. That's from God. He says, I see you. So anyway, take off, right? Um, God has been doing some amazing things in my life. I'll be honest. These last five years have been incredible. I've been traveling, flying all over the nation. I've even had some opportunities to fly abroad, fly over to Africa. Anybody from Africa over here make some noise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, okay. But, what, you know, I know God has a, a real sense of humor because I'm going to be honest with you. I hate flying. And this is, this is, I mean, I, if there was any other way, I'm, I'm trying to put, I'm trying to become a billionaire so I could build my own street. So I could just drive to Africa next time because, you know, I just don't, I don't feel like it's necessary to be up in that thing like that. You know, I'm going to figure that, I'm going to figure that out, right? But I don't really like flying. So it's funny that God would call me to nations and call me all over the nation. And I have a problem with the vehicle that he chooses to send. Okay and have a problem with the vehicle that he chooses to send me to get me there. Now, I want to be honest with you. I don't have a fear of heights. I don't have a fear of planes. I have a fear of getting in anything that I have no control over. I just preach. It's cool. I'm going just, to just leave that one right there. My, I don't have a fear of being up in the air like that. In fact, I kind of like it. You know, I'm kind of upset that I can't really fit roller coasters like that no more because, you know, I kind of enjoy that little rush. But, you know, if it ain't going to fasten on me, we ain't doing that, right? You know, I need to know that if you throw me to the left or the right, I'm going to still be in there. But that's, all right. So I enjoy being up high, seeing things from afar, but I don't like having to put my life in the hand of someone else that's not me. Some of y'all are just like me. If you could, you would drive to the Bahamas. I know you would. It's okay. Just keep looking at me. Don't even say nothing. I know I'm in a lot of y'all mail right now, but this is a word even to itself. Um, so I have a problem with relinquishing my control to a pilot. I have to, when I do that, I have to acknowledge the fact that this pilot knows more than I do. I have to acknowledge that this, this pilot has experience of not just the education of the craft, but he has education of the environment that will get me through where I need to go through to get to my destination. So I have to make a decision that I have to hand over my will for his will and trust that he will get me there on time. Now, in a perfect world, if I did build that bridge, you know, if I could build that bridge that would get me from California to uh, maybe Nigeria or something like that, right? I could take that route. I could take a cruise ship, hallelujah, and just enjoy myself on the boat. But the problem is I wouldn't get there at the right time. Okay, okay. If I don't choose the proper vehicle that is supposed to get me there at the designated time, if I go my own way, it may cost me getting there at a time that don't matter. So I want to massage this into your spirit right now. God has chosen the vehicle to get you from point A to point B. You've got to trust that vehicle because if you choose to go your own way, which he will allow you to do, what you don't realize, it may come at the toll of your time. Are you following me? So, so I, I just actually got back from a flight um, yesterday morning, and I was sitting here thinking, man, I remember my first flight. And I remember when I got to the destination, I just celebrated it like, man, I really made it. <laughs> then I looked at my life, well, how things are going. I'm like, man, life is really good. I feel like I made it. I got a fine fiance. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you ain't got to praise him. I'll praise him myself. Hallelujah. About to be married in May 25th. Hallelujah. <laughs> Boy, I've been celibate. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, ready, ready. I told you I was going to do it. I told you. I told you. Listen, I'm right there at the finish line. We right there. We right there, boy. I'm right there at the promised land. Okay. okay. Sorry. 
Reel me back in. But life is great. Life, life. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a moment. I'm just, you know, I feel like you saying, ball, I could just kind of cruise to the finish line now, you know. But anyway, uh, life is great. I feel great. Things are going well. I'm having amazing opportunities, becoming all these great things at one time. And when I got off the plane yesterday, the Holy Spirit literally said to me, while I was sitting there enjoying all my accomplishments and journey, he says, you haven't arrived yet. Whew. And it stopped me. For, for a moment, I had my bags, and I just said, what? I'm like, do you remember where we come from, Lord? Do you not remember the hood we grew up? This is it. I got clothes. Do you not remember I had to wear bags because my shoes, I couldn't fit them? Don't you remember that? I had holes in my clothes, had to wear the same jeans every day. You telling me I haven't arrived yet? says you haven't arrived yet. And some of you have been accompl very accomplished, have amazing goals that you set and you knocked them out of the park. And God is about to say to you what he said to me. You haven't arrived yet. Not because you can't be excited and enjoy how far I've taken you, but you can't be so caught up in arriving that you miss my next assignment for you. Oh, he says, I got more for you to do, and if you glorify this too much, you may miss when I make my next move for you. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. I'm preaching. Don't get caught up too much in the victories right now. God is saying there's going to be a time where I'm going to call you to move again. And I want to just kind of share with you where I've been these last couple of weeks. I called PT. PT asked me how I'm doing. Usually I lie. I'll be honest with you. I know you're busy, Pop. I ain't finna even lay this 23 minutes on you like that. So I said, I'm good. And he said, the Lord put you on my heart. How are you really doing? And I said, well, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> I said, I'm going to be honest, Pop. I, I'm, a, I'm a little frustrated with God because, because up to this moment, these last five years, I, I finally got a hold on who I thought I was. I thought I knew who I was. I thought I knew what I'm here to do. I thought I had me figured out. And, and now I feel like I went back from Exodus, walking into the promised land, to him starting me back over in Genesis 1 and 2. And I feel without form. I feel void. I feel there's no light, clarity where I am. And I feel like, I, I feel like I'm being set back again. And I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why do I feel this way? Do you know he laughed at me? <laughs> I was looking for like, oh son, come here. <laughs> and what he told me was, this is normal. I'm preaching, but you really missed it and that's okay. I'm gonna bring it back for you. So God says to me through pop, this is normal, going back and restarting the cycle over and over to rediscover who you are. The Holy Spirit says to me, when I arrive back home, you still haven't arrived yet. So it lets me know there's, we never truly arrive until we get to glory. So there's going to always be a season where God then takes you on another journey. There's also another season where you will feel formless. Now, you shouldn't feel like formless is a disadvantage because as we look in Genesis, anytime there is no form, God gets excited to create something. I need you to get yourself out of this box you put yourself in. I need you to look at where you are and say, Lord, I don't know. You, you, anybody, if by show of hands, you just, I don't know really who I am or what I'm supposed to do right now. I, I, I came here to be a stylist, but now God is calling me over to this area. And I have no background for that. God, I just came here to make a couple beats, get me a Grammy or two and be cool with it. But now God has got this prophetic unction on me. And every time I'm going into the room, I'm, streak, I'm speaking truth to power. What is this? I'm not really used to that. I actually came just to get my cameo and be in somebody movie but now there's an apostolic anointing through technology I wasn't even expecting that God what is this formlessness I'm feeling and so I want to help you know that there will always be as long as you are breathing a new itinerary oh yeah 
Um, you're going to always get a new set of, hey, this is where I won't take you now. And so I want to say it again, for if you need notes, if you didn't write down, you missed it, I'll charge you this time, it's cool, don't worry about it, just sell me. You can never be so caught up in arriving that you miss the next assignment. It's like somebody getting a layover and excited that they were going to get to L.A., but their layover is in Houston, and they're celebrating like they're already in L.A. They over there getting the popcorn, ah, yeah. Meanwhile, they're missing their flight. Okay, okay. I'm going to be very parabolic today. I found a new word. It's called parabolic, which means, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, because y'all be trying to get on me on my country grammar. Yes, I just said parabolic. It is a word. Look it up in Google. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to be speaking in parables. I've noticed Jesus did that a lot. When he wanted to make people understand the kingdom and what it was like, he would speak in ways that they would understand. The reason why he would say the kingdom is like a seed is because everybody grew their own food at the time. So now I'm going to use something that you, you, you probably, anybody hasn't flown before? Raise your hand. Hasn't flown in an airplane before? Okay, everybody has flown. Hallelujah. Right. So I'm going to use something that you've done before to help you reveal what it's like arriving not just in the natural into a new place, but the new place in you. Can we do that today? Okay, so arriving is not so much about the destination. It's more so about trusting the voice of direction leading you to the destination. And God wants to know who is more interested in hearing my voice than hearing where I'm pointing them to. Is there anybody that would say, I would rather follow you, Lord, into a valley than to be rich on top of a mountain without you there? I, 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 I would rather do that. I'd rather have you than silver or gold, right? So, 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 so you have to know that arriving in God, when you, look, you have to look more forward to his direction way more than you look for the destination. You got to be more interested in saying, God, where are you leading me? I want you to be a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, instead of saying, Lord, I just want to arrive to where you called me to be, right? If you need scripture, I got you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says it this way. Um, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Watch this. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what will he do? He will direct your path. So God looks for the one who says, don't just tell me where I'm going to go, but I want your voice to lead me with every step that I'm going to make. So I'm going to use today that the kingdom, understanding arriving in the kingdom and as yourself is a lot like going through a trip to the airport. I'm going to be very practical today. Okay. Now, we talk about takeoff. Everybody wants to take off, right? I saw all your hands, y'all shouting, I'm taking off. Hallelujah. But there's a process that you've got to go through to even be allowed on the runway. Okay, can I set this thing up real quick? There's this thing called the terminal. Everyone say terminal. You can't get to the takeoff without going through the terminal. The terminal is a three-step process. You begin to evaluate three things. You evaluate your luggage, mm, okay. You evaluate, you evaluate your ticket, and you evaluate your identification. Can we start here? Okay, let's talk about luggage. You all know, we pull up there, we, we bring our luggage for those that got a check bag, we sit that bag on the scale, and the scale tells us, have we brought the necessary things or do we have too much? Oh, yeah, okay. So, 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 I'm not going to talk about women. I'm not going to talk about nobody. Fellas, just keep looking at me. But there are certain individuals that don't know how to just bring the necessary things. I ain't trying to start no fight. Bros, look at me. Do not look over to your left or right. Okay? But there, but there are some people that just don't know how to pack light because... They really like what's in their space. They really like bringing everything with them. And so when they get to the scale, the scale says, uh, I'm sorry, too much. this is too heavy for where you're going. 
Now you got a decision to make when you are confronted with this, potent, with, with, this, with this situation because potentially this was actually your job before getting to the terminal to take inventory to say, I ain't bringing that with me. I ain't bringing that with me because when I get to the new place, there's some new things I would want to bring back. Okay, okay. Okay, so I don't even want to fill up my space with too much old stuff because I can't make room for the new if I got too much old coming with me. I'm preaching, but you're missing this. All right. So, 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 so if you haven't taken that inventory, there will come a time where you have to uh, acknowledge and come face to face with your lack of preparation. And so you weigh it on the scale and the scale says, I'm sorry, but this is too much. You're going to have to leave some things behind. Now, should you resist that, that's fine, but guess what? Two things are happening. One, it's going to cost you a lot more to move with this unnecessary baggage than it would be to let it go. Number two is all the while, while you're trying to decide if you're going to throw this away or not or pay for it, you're actually getting, being late to your assigned place. And you're running the risk of missing your destination because of dead things. Oh, yeah. Can I give you a note if you need this? If what's in your bag doesn't work right now in this season, then it's unnecessary weight. So begin to take inventory, your friends, your relationships, the career, the things that you're into. It's, I got a, even some things that are dealing with you, your unforgiveness, your bitterness. That stuff can't stay in your bag because it's unnecessary weight. So let me show you what this looks like. We, we show up to the scale knowing we got too much in our bag. We drop our bag at the scale. And we know we got too much, but we hoping that the lady will show us some mercy. But, <laughs> Sister Martha, would you please just, would you please? I really want to bring these shoes. I really want to bring them. Now I know how that feels because my shoes cost three pounds a piece. I understand that. So I, I already know, praise Jesus, right? So, but she doesn't allow it because she has something to upkeep. She has a, she has a job she has to maintain. She has a boundary she has to set. And so, yes, even though you feel that it's unnecessary, this is for the good of the plane. That's a word. I can't get there. Okay. Um, so, 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 I, I don't even let me get there. So, so, so now you show up with too much in your bag. It's sitting there. And, and now you're trying to reason with her and say, it's only just a little bit. And so she says, you have two choices. You can either pay the penalty or leave it behind. Now, the problem is, you know that you don't want to pay this unnecessary tax. But now, because you haven't addressed it before getting to the terminal, everybody's got to watch you open your bag. <laughs> so you got to show your bag to the person who's weighing it and everybody that's around you. But some ought to rise up in you and say, I don't care who watching me clean this bag, I got somewhere to be. Don't it just come over you after a little while? At first, you was arguing about the thing. I've had this thing since I was 17 years old. You don't, wait a minute. I leave in 15 minutes. Wait, I'm preaching, I'm preaching, I'm preaching. So, so when you get to this altar, I know that people expect you to try to hide what's in your bag, but you got to say, no, 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 no. I don't care who's watching me right now. I got somewhere to be. God set an appointment for me, and I don't care how you're looking at me, but I'm going to get to where God has assigned me to be. So, so we have to take inventory of our weight, dead weight. So when we weigh it on the scale, the number keeps shooting up. Unforgiveness, up, the number shooting up. Bitterness, up, number shooting up. Secrets, ooh, number shooting up. Unmanaged trauma, up, the number shooting up. And now it's like, no, you got, you got to get this out of your bag because, because, because you can't go where you're supposed to be going. Not only is it not safe for you, to, uh, only, not only is it not good for you, it's not allowed, it's actually not safe for you to bring this on the plane. 
Do you know the reason why they weigh the, the, the actual bags? It's because there's a certain weight limit to allow to be on transport. And so you don't realize that your baggage don't just affect you, it affect people that, okay. Okay. So I gotta watch what's in my bag cause what's in my bag ain't, can't just be harmful to me and set me back, but it can set somebody else back. Trying to show you, it's the luggage, it's the luggage. If you need scripture, you think I'm making it up. I'm going to show you right here. Um, Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Now that we are around a, 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 a great crowd, cloud of witnesses, let us then what? Lay aside every... Ooh. Lay aside every weight and sin what, which so easily ensnares us. Keeps us from getting to where we're supposed to be. God says, I, I need you to be willing to let it go because you don't realize the baggage you keep and don't want to see you get to your destination. In fact, they like you right where you are. Some of you are going to have to look at some day ones and say, mm. uh, for where I'm trying to go, this is a little too heavy for me. Okay. Some of you are going to have to look at some relationships that you invoted, invested too much emotional wealth into and you got to say, wait a minute. This is a little too heavy for me. Some of you have got to go to some careers and say, I love how much money you make, you, you give me. I love the zeros on the check. But to be honest with you, where God is asking me to go, I honestly don't even need that right now. So that's the luggage. So once we get through the luggage, we get over to the ticket check. Mm. Okay, ticket check is to verify that someone has paid for you to be there. Okay, so you can look at this on two sides, right? So, 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 of course, we all know that we have been bought with a price. Hallelujah. But see, God also has a scripture that says, those that suffer with me will reign with me. So I want you to know that even the things that you have gone through has been purchased in validation for your ticket and your seat for where you're going. Because some of you think that what you went through was for nothing. You feel like being let go from the job was for nothing. Some of you felt like being lost in the relationship, the divorce, the, the being laid off, the, 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 the no's that you got for opportunities, the, the no from the bank, the no from the business, the no from your support team. And you feel that what you've gone through is for nothing. But you didn't know that that was actually down payment for the ticket that you are about to cash in on that requires you to have a seat with your name on it. You didn't hear what I said. I said that this thing that you paid for is a ticket with your name on it. So I don't have to be jealous of the next person because I know I got a seat with my name on it. So the ticket is a moment where we take inventory of the things that we went through. And God says, no, this is what validates your seat. Oh, yeah. The thing that you want to hide, this ticket is actually your testimony. You, should, you know how you don't know how to know what to do with your ticket when you're there after you have gone through security? You're just holding this piece of paper, and to the other people, they feel like it's useless. But no, no, this is proof of purchase. This is proof, this is proof that I went through something. This is proof that this is my seat, that the higher authority is giving me. Don't be upset with my seat because I paid the price. The higher the price, the better the seat. You know how it goes. So don't be upset if my seat is up in front because I I paid a price to be it. You know, some people marvel at those that have awesome opportunities. And, and some people may get it twisted on this stage and think that everybody wants to be up here. Let me tell you something. It has to do with the ticket that I had to purchase to get up here and be a ministering, per, a ministering instrument to you. I need you to know that there was nights that I didn't know I was going to make it. It was nights that I had to cry. It was nights that I was about to lose my mind. It was nights that I wanted to take my life. It was nights that I felt like medicating. It was times that I actually self-medicated but I need you to know that it was a part of God's plan to say this is my son's seat I need somebody to say I got a seat I got a and if it's your seat no devil in hell can keep you from the seat that you paid for I got a seat and it's got my name on it your name ain't Roosevelt, don't be in that seat because you didn't pay what Roosevelt had to pay for it. Okay, 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 okay. I got a seat. But then, even after the ticket has been verified, there's still one more process. There's a process 
where you have to be stripped. I don't know what's wrong with TSA. <laughs> everything they say, everything that's on TikTok is true. I mean, they could be having, if you work for TSA, I love you, but y'all need to talk to us better, okay? <laughs> I mean, it don't matter if it's 5 in the a.m. or 11, 59 at p.m. Take your jacket off, put your, put your laptop in the kit. No, without the bag, sir. You, 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 here, now, 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 okay? They be so mean. I, I be trying to be so nice. God bless you. Do you have any electronics in your bag? Water, water. And boy, don't you get it wrong and actually have some in there. Whose bag is this? You, here, now. Right? But then... There's a season. There's a season. <laughs> y'all know it's true. That's why y'all love. If you work for TSA, I love you so much, and I'm praying for you. I see you right there. Don't beat me up. I'm just saying, you know, you, you know it's the real deal. Okay, anyway. Okay. So there's a season of stripping. There's a season where you, what, what has gone through with you. Oh, wait, wait. Let me pass right here. Let me pass right here. The thing about a ticket, before we get to security is that there are some people who have walked with you for so long that don't have a ticket. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Appreciate that. Oh, oh yeah, wait a minute. No, because, because the terminal separates who's really going somewhere and who... Oh, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Talk that talk, Holy Ghost, I feel that. No, no, I need to say that because some of you have been letting folks travel with you up to a certain point and God says there's a line I'm about to cross. There's a line that you're about to cross and only people that can cross it are people that have a ticket, that have paid for something. People have freeloaded on your favor long enough and yes, you've been a blessing to them, but God says where I'm taking you now, unless you got a ticket, you cannot go. Uh, I don't know. That wasn't up there. That was, that was Holy Spirit. Thank you for reminding me, Holy Spirit. There are some people that, that, that have been getting away with pretending like they want to go somewhere. And, and you've been walking them through the whole process, walking around with them not knowing. And, and then after another, God allows you to keep walking and you look back and you see they're still there. And you say, God, why did they leave me? And God says, they didn't leave you. This is as far as they can go without a ticket. As far as they can go. I know you love them. Mm, yeah. I know, you, 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 they was your day ones. Yeah, yeah, they was your best friend, yeah. They were your confidant, they gave you everything, you gave them everything, and now you're trying to figure out why is our life separating us? Why are we further apart? It's not because that person don't love you and you don't love them, it's actually because God has designed it that whoever goes with you from here has a ticket just like you did. And if that person was just that much invested, they would have paid the same price. Okay, I got to move. So we get to the identification. We survived TSA, hallelujah. We show our identification and, and, and they begin to examine it. They look at the ID card and then they look at us. Oh, yeah. They, 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 they look at... The ID, um, in case you haven't forgot it uh, or haven't caught on, um, this is not the season to have fake ID. You're going to have to be who God says you are to get access in rooms. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Because, because, because too many have been gaining access with the imposter anointing. They, 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 they've been able to look like they, they, they want to take on a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. 
Okay, okay, so, so God says, I need you to look like me. I need that when they hold you up in the light, that is authentic. I need them to know that you really are living for me and not just trying to get likes on TikTok and Instagram, but you really will say, for God I live and for God I die. I need when the light comes on that they see that there's a mark on you that from a higher authority that says you are certified and you've been stamped by me. So, so, so the, identif- the identification means uh, um, 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 I look like what is presented in the light. Oh. Uh, I wanna, yeah, we got we to gotta talk about holiness a little bit. Can we do that? Because see, the thing about a counterfeit ID is when you shine it in the light, it does not show the sign. Yeah, 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 I am. I the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is moving. I feel it. See, when you have an ID card and you know there's that little stamp on there, the fake IDs, I know I had a fake ID. Don't tell nobody, right? I had a fake ID, and when they showed it in the light, they say, wait a minute. It doesn't carry the, it doesn't carry the mark from a high authority. Can I submit to you that there's coming a season where the light's about to come on in the earth? And, and the, when the world is going to be looking for what's real, really for real and they're going to hold some of our lives up to the light and we've got to make sure that we've been stamped by the one and true living God. Are you hearing me? So, so, so they examine our image and then they examine our items. You got to put the stuff in there. Say goodbye to it for a season. You got to disrobe yourself of anything that you use to embellish yourself. Anything that, yeah, baby, yeah, 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 I felt that one. Um, um, You got to, you got to, you got to take off everything that embellish, that embellishes who you are, that holds up what you can't hold up, and and you got to walk through this moment of just being seen. I want you to know that that, 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 that that season is a lot like in the kingdom. A lot of things that you lost was so God could show you who you really are. Uh, if, you, if you were a worshiper before going through this stripping, then guess what? When you come out of this stripping, you didn't lose anything. You actually are still the same worshiper when you come out of the stripping. If you were a warrior before going through the stripping, then nothing really changes. I, yeah, I lost some things. Yes, I let go of some things. Yes, some things I had to throw away, but it didn't rob me of who I am. I know who I am, and I'm willing to go through this process so that God can prove who I am. I am still the same person before the stripping that I am after the stripping. I can get the stuff back, but if I don't know who I am, I don't get to go to where God has called me to go. I've got to know who I am. Could you just, I know I'm I'm, I'm about done, it's one o'clock, I'm actually early, but could you just say, I know who I am? No, I need, oh, I'm about to come out this jacket. I, 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 I need you to say this like the enemy who has tried to lie and deceive you to make you feel like because of what you went through and because of what you lost, that you lost a piece of yourself because of abusive relationships telling you that you would never amount to anything. And here you are growing. Here you are still what God called. I need you to say this this time. And if it tear the paint off the walls, so be it. But I need you to say, I know who I am. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt that. I felt that. You've got to have that. You have to have that disposition when, when, when opposition comes against you that says, no, I'm not going to let you talk to me that way. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. God has anointed me. And even though I may lose something in this season, it does not rob me that I'm still anointed. I still got a call on my life. I still got a plan. God's got something working out for me. I'm still, oh, no, no, don't get it twisted. Yeah, I lost it, but it didn't change. I'm still who God says I am. I know who I am. So if you survive that season of being stripped, losing the things that embellished you, <laughs> losing the title, oh, losing the career, 
Losing the accolades and the accomplishments. Listen, we live in a time where people will scream Hosanna for you and say crucify them, cru crucify him tomorrow. You've got to understand you cannot put your trust in things because things fleet, things change. You could be hot right now on TikTok and be forgotten tomorrow. You've got to put your, your value, you've got to put your stock in something that does not lose value and that is the truth of Jesus. Okay. So then, once you have gone through the terminal, you get to the plane. Get in line, you get to your seat that has your name on it, hallelujah. But just because you got on board, and just because you've come aboard, doesn't mean you have arrived yet. There's still a process. And I know a lot of us are right here, because it's like, Lord, I went through the stripping. I still am who God says I am. I got rid of the stuff that you told me to get rid of. I dealt with the embarrassment, but here I am with only the necessity things. I packed light. But now, I'm ready to go. And we just sitting on this runway. I hear your voice telling me we're getting ready to go. But I sense no movement. Didn't you tell me we had a certain time to get there? What's keeping me from gaining ground? What's keeping me from going higher? What's keeping me from reaching my destination? I got a couple things I need to tell you. Number one thing you need to do while you're getting ready to take off is fasten yourself. Mm -hmm. Ain't that what they tell us? Put on your seatbelt. I need you to fasten yourself. Now, I want to submit something. If you want to invent something, this is just for free. If you want to invent something that lasts for generations, read the Bible. I can prove to you that every amazing invention came from the Word of God. Every single one of them. And what they do is, oh God, don't get me messed up here. They do these seminars to make you come and listen to them when they are reading the Bible that you left home. Okay, all right, let me move. All right. If you want to create something timeless that can be used from generations to generation, read the Bible. I'm going to show you right now that the plane was made from the Bible. You ready? Psalms 91 and 4. Could you give me that? Psalms 91 and 4. Here we go, here we go. The scripture says, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Watch this. God says, I need you to fasten yourself in my truth because we're going to start moving pretty soon. There's going to be shifting to the left and shifting to the right. And the only thing that's going to keep you in your spot and not lose your seat or harm yourself is if you fasten yourself in my truth. If you, if you let me be your shield, if you let me, if you let me breathe on you, if you let me uh, whisper these words into you, you follow these instructions and you follow my, my direction, I promise you that even when the turbulence comes, that's a whole other message there, but you will know that you're built for the turbulence, one, and you know that you will not be moved. You will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Okay, okay, so, so, so now you understand that, that, that God is saying in the season before before you take off, I need you to allow me to buckle you in. It's going it's to get fast in a little bit. The speed is about to pick up, and I, I don't want you to lose your place. I don't want you to hurt yourself. The next thing I need you to do is make sure there's no interference. In the airplane, your phone Although it's communication for you, it's interference for the vehicle that's supposed to get you to where you need to go. So they tell you because, because, because communication is key between where you are and where you're supposed to be because there's a lot of interference in the air. There's a lot of turbulence and we got to make sure that there's a voice leading us. 
So I got to make sure that there's not something on my phone that will cause them to miss communication with each other that could cause this thing to go down. Okay, okay, so what I'm saying is they call it in the, in, in, in the, in the, air, in the, in the flying terms, it's called airplane mode. So when you turn your phone off, can't nobody call you, you can't call nobody. And I know a lot of us, we like to wait till we about to go up in the air and then we push it. But what, I, I always ask them, hey, why is the reason you always put this, always tell them to put on airplane mode? He says, well, actually, you know, to be honest with you, there's a lot of uh, 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 wavelengths of communication. And so sometimes our phones, while we're on the phone, could interfere with them communicating with each other. And imagine what would happen at an airport if no one could communicate with each other and we all took off at the wrong time. So God says, I need you, I, I need you to not go posting where you're going right now. I know, I know. God, I just got a TikTok. Wait. I want to show everybody my Fashion Nova outfit, Jesus. He says, no, I, I need you to consecrate yourself right now. Be, be, because what you don't realize is sometimes the enemy's looking for the one that's most talkative. Oh, yeah. You don't understand that you could become a target just by talking. And this is why Jesus was able to escape the hands of being killed as a baby because ain't nobody say, here go Jesus, born in the manger, the prophesied Messiah. Because then he would have been a direct target for the enemy. And so I want you to know that there's Warfare in the airwaves. Ooh. I almost want to pause right here and prophesy. I think you should go on a fast from social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, because, because, because where God is about to take you, he doesn't need any interference. You need scripture. You think I'm making it up. Galatians 5 and 17 says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And, and so, in other words, the, 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 the flesh causes interference. For the spirit to do what God has assigned it to do. So you got to make up in your mind that I refuse to let my flesh or the need to be seen or the need to be notarized or to be recognized to get in the way of what God is doing because it could very much, it could very much cause us to crash and burn. These are contrary to one another. So in other words, my phone is an enemy to me getting to the other side if it's not in the proper place. They're contrary to one another so that you do, oh. Don't even worry about it. Well, th there we go, it's back. So that you do not do the things that you wish. Everybody wants to be seen. It's in your flesh to want that. You got to resist that because guess what comes after that? So your pride serves as interference from hearing the voice of God. So some of you want to, I don't hear God like I used to. When I was struggling, I heard him good. You know why? Because you prayed every day. Okay? You, you, you say, God, I, I, should I do this? Should I do that? But then when the success starts happening, and I'm starting to get on more flights, and I'm getting flued out. <laughs> I'm up on y'all terminologies. I ain't that old. Huh? I don't look for the voice. You, don't, you notice it. The more you fly, you don't even listen to what the women are saying no more. Yes, I know. Emergency seat. Got it. Yep. Exits on the back. Yep. Got it. Lights. Yep. And then when turbulence come. Oh, oh Jesus, would you tell us what's going on, please? I don't know what's going on. Lord, would you help us get us out of this? Where's the pilot man? He ain't said nothing. He quiet. I know, I'm all up in y'all mail. Is this blessing y'all though? Okay, cool. The last thing I want you to do for takeoff is after you removed all interference, after you fastened yourself, I need you to prepare for departure. I need you to be prepared to leave the place that you've been comfortable being in for now. Some of us, it's not so much the enemy stopping us from getting to where we want to go. It's our improper relationship with our past. 
It's us feeling like what's above us is too big, that we're afraid to leave the runway. God says, I'm giving you to go, and I need you to go. But because of fear, you, you say, this, this is, looks scary. I'm not ready for this. I, I'm not prepared to, to go above and go in a place that I've never seen before and touch down in a place that doesn't know who I am and I don't know where that is. God says, I need you to be prepared for departure because there is no arrival without departure. Once you prepare for departure, I need you to prepare that things are about to get real fast, real quick. You ever notice that you just chilling and then all of a sudden, wait a no, oh. Your whole neck just go backwards and your head still forward. Yeah. It, it, wait a minute. And, and in the kingdom, it's, it's the same thing. You, you, you thought you knew who you were and God just starts pulling you in a whole other direction. And, he, and you start to say, Lord, this is going a little too fast. I'm not comfortable. Could you slow down a little bit? And God says, this is what's needed to get you off the ground. Some of you, life happened really fast for you. Yeah. And he's like, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for this. And God says this was to get you off the ground, to get you where I called you to be. But the thing about going up in the air, I know it's scary. That first pull off and you're like, oh! <laughs> Don't act like y'all gonna be scared. You grab the seat, the handle seats a little bit. And me, I'm so big, I got to lift up the handle seat. So I grab a person's leg. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> I said, listen, I'm not going nowhere. I don't even know you, young lady, but that, ah, don't move. I, listen, I'm grabbing a ponytail or something. I'm not going down. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It, but the liftoff is so, so unexpected. You feel yourself going up. Some of you like to close your eyes a little bit because you were scared to look down. But I want to challenge you, look down for a second. And I want you to watch how the takeoff elevates not just your position, but your perspective. Yeah. Before the takeoff, there were things that were above me that seemed insurmountable. But when God took me up, I looked down and I realized they're not as big as I thought they were. They're not as intimidating as I thought. I realized how small the things were that kept me in the same place. I couldn't even find my football field when I first flew. I was like, where is it? I couldn't see it. But I wanted to live and die in Fort Myers. I said, I'm going to grow and die where I was planted. Refusing to receive that God had another assignment for me to arrive somewhere else. I want to speak that over you. I want you to look down sometimes when God takes you up. Not just to be thankful for how far he brought you, but to put those things that used to be over your head in their rightful place, under your feet. If you receive the word of the Lord, could you put your hands together? I'm telling you. If you follow this, if you follow this, I promise you, whether it's arriving in your career, arriving in ministry, arriving in yourself, I promise you, you will never be late for what God has for you. But you got to take the necessary time. So I'm going to pray for you. Could you stand? First prayer, I'm going to pray for the one who now understands that I can't arrive can't arrive without Jesus. I've been trying to get there. I've been, listen, I, I, you did a pretty good job leading up to now. I know. I ain't no judgment. I get it. You've done what you thought you could do. And you're like, I never really get there. I'm always in a layover. It's like a, a version of there, but it's not where I'm supposed to be. And I'm tired of missing flights. I'm tired of arriving late. I'm tired of my life not being in, re in relevance to what God is doing. And I realize I can't do that without Jesus. Every head bow, every eye closed. If you're in this room, I see your hand already. Wow. If you're in this room and you're saying, I realize I cannot arrive without Jesus 
and you want to make your life his and say, God, I need you. Jesus, I need you to arrive. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Wow, 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 wow. I see you. I see you. I see you, daughter. I see you, son. I see you, brother. I see you, sister. I see you, fam. I see you way in the back. Yep, I see you. None, none of you are missing my eye. I see you. 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 Thank you. You can put your hands down. The second prayer is for those that got luggage. And you are saying to yourself, this is too, he oh man, his hand is all the way up. Wow, I received that. Saying, this is too heavy for me. I've been trying to keep the old things, but now I know I can't keep it no more. The unforgiveness, the heartbrokenness, the bitterness, the anger, the hate, the confusion, the shame, the guilt. I don't want it in my bag no more because it's keeping me from my assignment. You're saying, God, today I want to let go of that heavy weight so that you can give me passage to where I'm supposed to be. On the count of three, raise your hand. One, two, three, I see you. I see you. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, I see you, I see you, I see you. It's literally like 50 hands up. Wow, 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 wow. I see you, I see you, I see you. All the way to the back, I see you. Thank you so much, you can put your hands down. The last prayer. So I want to pray for those who have felt they've been on the runway forever. It's like, God, I'm watching everybody else take off. And I did what you asked me. I went through the season of stripping. I went through the embarrassment of opening up my bag and letting you take out everything that you said was garbage to me. I let you do it. And I still haven't heard the voices say we're cleared to take off. Now I understand that there's something causing interference. Whether it's my disbelief that it can happen or the things that are happening in my life that I'm giving too much attention to. And now I'm making a decision, I will wait on you until I hear your voice, I'm not leaving. Because I refuse to go without your say so and crash and burn. If that's you on the count of three, raise your hand and lift it up. I want to hear your voice, Lord. I see you. I see you. I want to hear you clearly. I want to know that it's your voice that I'm hearing and not my own. I want to know it's your voice and not social media. I want to know it's your voice and not popular opinion. I want to know it's your voice and not abusive voices speaking to me. I want to know it's you. Now I'm going to ask you to do something. And if you give me five minutes... Prayer team, security team, I'm getting ready to do it. Just letting you know now. But I feel God. Um, if you raise your hand for any of those, I don't want to force you, but if you want to take off for real, I want you to come meet me down here. It takes, it's a big step. I know I'm going to the altar and I got baggage, I got luggage, but I refuse to care about what the person next to me thinks and I miss my flight. I can't do it. My life is dependent on getting here on time. I don't care who sees me. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they think is in my bag. They can see it. That's why I'm so vulnerable with y'all. Listen, I don't want you to ever feel ashamed of what you do. As a pastor, do you know how many mistakes I made? Do you know how many things I knew was wrong and did it anyway? That's why I'm so passionate about you because I don't want you to be stuck like I was. It took me seven years to figure it out. You don't have to go through that. You've already paid for your ticket. Why pay more? Jesus already paid it all. Why pay more? I share my testimony like I did last week, uh, last, this last service. When I grew up, all I thought about was football. My dad played football. And when my mom and dad split up, when we grew up in poverty, I said, the best way I'm going to take care of my mom is play football. I'm going to get my mom out the hood and stop living in this place with no lights and no water. I'm going to get my family out the hood. I'm going to take care of everybody. I don't know. I don't, I don't look like it now, but I was a problem in high school. I, I could really play. So I got to college, walked on, made the team, celebrating, happy, telling my mom what's going on. 
out of nowhere, a dump truck is bagging up and hits my car. And I can't get out of the car because my, my disc is bulging out of place. And people thought I was crying because of the pain. I was crying because I said, God, how am I supposed to take care of my family now? How am I going to get us out of poverty now? I gave you a plan. You didn't like it? Tell me. And I'm sitting there waiting for the paramedics to pull me out of the car. Because I can't even move. And I feel so defeated because I felt like I worked so hard to get to this place that I thought was my runway. And while I'm sitting there in the hospital, they share the news, say, hey, we're sorry, man, but your scholarship was based on you playing. If you can't play, we can't give you the scholarship to take care of your classes. Now, you can stay, but you got to pay it yourself until you get healed. I said, Lord, I don't have no money. How am I going to stay in school? Tried for three months. It did not work. I came back home. I was mad at everything. I hated my life. And God said this to me. I didn't know what it meant. He said, if you, this is why I was homeless. He said, if you take care of my house, I'll take care of you. I had no frame of reference of what that meant, y'all. I wasn't working for a church. I wasn't doing anything that I'm doing right now. So that started with me cutting grass outside of the church. And every time I did it, there was a meal. It started with me playing the drums and turning to $50. It started with playing keyboard and it turned to $150. It started with leading worship and it turned to $300. And I cried when I had $300 because I had never seen money like that for serving the Lord. I'm showing you there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, yeah, you can make your plan, but it's God who orders your steps. Amen. And I want you to know that every one of you who have come down here to this altar, God is ordering your steps. Even the painful thing that you endure, he's ordering your steps. So I'm going to pray with you. God, I pray. For your daughters, pray for your sons. God, so many of them are hurting. They feel disappointed. Saying, God, why did you leave me? Why did you disappoint me? Let them know your word. That all things work together. For the good of them that love the Lord. And are called according to his purpose. I thank you every person right now that felt that they couldn't do it. I pray that they know that by your spirit, they will achieve exactly what you've called them to do. They will arrive. They have not missed anything. They are not too late for anything. As long as they got breath in their body, God, you said that they will arrive. I pray for the one that's got luggage. Yeah. Of what was done to them. That they're having trouble of letting go that still breaks their heart when they think about it. God, you said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And you said you would give them rest. I speak rest right now, and I speak that their loads are getting lighter right now. Every broken heart, let it be removed right now. All unforgiveness, let it be stripped out of the bag. All brokenness, let it be stripped out of the bag. Depression, thoughts of suicide, low self-esteem, everything that makes them feel like they are not enough, every abusive sentence that has ever been cast at them, let it come out of this bag right now. They are only allowing the things that you said are necessary. And what that person said about them is not necessary. What that statistic said about about them is not necessary. God, you know the thoughts you think toward them. They will prosper. They will be good in health. 
So God, I pray that you will restore them. Removing all the, all the junk. It's just junk. Let it go. You don't have to hold on to it. It's junk. Let it go. You might have to cry. That's cool. But just let it go. You don't have to hold on to that abuse. God says, I'm bringing you into a new thing. I pray for the one last that's on the runway of their life. And it's feeling as if they've been there forever. Help them understand that you're just waiting for the right time for there to be no interference that when you cause it to go zero to a hundred real quick, you are going to send them into a skyrocket. They're going to soar higher than they ever thought possible. Turbulence will not be able to stop them. Devils will not be able to stop them. Principalities will not be able to stop them. There is nothing that can keep them from what you have assigned to their life. Give them the patience to wait this thing out. Because when you speak, it's going to change. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Lift your hands. Say, Father, I've heard your word. I receive it. Father, I sense your presence. I embrace it. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making him who knew no sin, all of mine, all of my shortcomings, all of my disappointments, all of my luggage, all of my weight, all of my baggage was placed on the cross and put to death. But when Jesus got up, because I live for Jesus and because he lives in me, I will get up. Say, I know who I am. I am not forgotten. I am not forsaken. I'm not cast down. I'm not destroyed. God has a plan for me. Satan, you have been over my head long enough. God has lifted me up. And once you were over my head, you are now under my feet. Get back in your place in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, lead me. Guide me. Speak to me. I'm listening. I'm ready to arrive to my next level. In Jesus' name, if you receive that word, scream like you lost your mind. Yeah. yeah. It's done. It's done. God bless you, family. Well, I just believe and know that that word ministered to you as they often always do. Remember to subscribe so that you can continue to experience this rich. We'll send you a reminder. If you want to sow into this ministry, we are reaching people, as you know, all around the world. And we need your help and your support to not just bless people spiritually, but practically in all the ways that we do. The giving instructions are on the screen. Sow into this and may the Lord bless you abundantly in every way. God bless you. We'll see you next week.